unbelievable. I learned those extra abilities, those extra skills. I had no idea when I started how it would compound my income and change my whole financial life and financial future. So have you got that now? Be a student of ability. What if you took on one more skill and then took on one more skill? Next, be a student of inevitability, which is called consequences that you don't want to suffer. If you have a poor diet, it doesn't take that long for the early signs to appear. And if you keep it up, it doesn't take long for the serious signs to appear. The consequences are too deadly. We must be students of inevitability. Yes, inevitability on the positive side, but most of us, you know, can do that. But we must also study inevitability on the negative side. Consequences. If you're in a little boat on the River Niagara, on a little boat with no motor and no oars, and you're 100 feet from the falls, it's called inevitable. <laughs> it's, it's over. Somebody should have painted you that scene way upstream so that you wouldn't find yourself in such an inevitable position. Right? It's over before you reach the falls in a little boat with no motor and no oars a hundred feet away. Now here's the next one. Be a student of rationality. Be able to put everything through your own mind and your own thinking process. Challenge yourself to think constructively. Here's the next one. Challenge yourself to do some new thinking. I think it was Einstein who said, you know, the real challenge is to, how can we use the same thinking that caused the problems now to come up with the answers? So here's what we have to do, shift gears into some new areas of thinking, new ways of thinking how to solve problems. Not the old thinking that caused the problems, the new style of thinking that creates the answers. Rationality also means, yes, be optimistic, but also be a realist. Here's how it really is. Here's how it could be. Here are the possibilities, but here's how it really is. Take input, but not orders. Abraham Lincoln said, since I would be no one's slave, I will be no one's master. Be no one's slave. Take input, yes. Take advice, yes. Gather in information, yes, and then you decide. Now make this little list. This is a good list. Five sources of inspiration. Number one, deciding. Maybe some of you this weekend have engaged in the decision-making process that is going to send you home with a new phase of inspiration in your life to start making whatever changes you need to make, amend the errors in, in disciplines and judgments. Deciding is so exciting once you've decided, especially those major decisions that you know are going to have an outcome in spite of anything that can happen. Especially if you decide it like this, no matter what. See, that is, you can't believe how Self-confidence and self-esteem starts to serve you well when you start to say, no matter what. Here's the next source of inspiration. Planning what you've decided. Just start laying it out. Here's my new health plan. I'm going to do this, 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 and this, and this. Here's the new financial plan. I'm going to do this, this, and this, and this. My relationship is in a bit of disrepair. I've decided to do this, 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 and this. Just decide and lay out some plans because decision starts the inspiration process and planning furthers the inspiration. 
Here's the next source of inspiration, beginning the plan, getting started. I taught this a long time ago, I haven't for a long time. An apple a day could start the process of changing your life. Number one, deciding that it's a good thing to do. Number one, before the day is over, to eat the first apple. And especially by the time you've reached the second and the third day, you, here's what you can say, I'm on a new track. And it's only three apples. I'm never going back to the old ways, munch, munch, munch. Third day, you could be inspired starting the third day by deciding, first apple, second day, apple, and you can say, hey, I've got, I've got this down. This is going to do it for me. And it can be just that simple. Life-changing decisions, making plans, getting started, following through. Doesn't have to be something profound. You don't have to build a city to get inspired or to prove to somebody, or especially to prove to yourself, that you're on a better track. You're, you're now walking a better path, and the outcome is going to be dramatic and powerful. Key. So then that's the next one. The first source is deciding, the next one is planning, the next one is beginning, here's the next one. Progressing, staying at it. By the time you've finished that first week on a new plan, you'll be so excited. By the time you've finished the first 30 days, on a new financial plan, regardless how little the progress, the inspiration will continue to grow. Your self-esteem will soar. Then, of course, here's the fifth source of in inspiration, and that's finally achieving. Not achieving everything. We cannot do that. We can't achieve everything at once. But we can work on this project and achieve that. Work on the next project and achieve that. We set up this goal and we achieve that. We set up a production goal and we hit it. We set up a goal to increase our income. Within 90 days, we had arrived at that new figure, achieving. Wow. Now in your development as a leader, make these good notes. Learn the law of faith. The law of faith is very simple. Here's what it says. With faith, everything's possible. Without faith, nothing is possible. Faith is the, the ability to see what doesn't yet exist. Faith is the ability to believe that it's possible. Faith is not like tangible. But it is so close to real, we call it a piece of the real. One writer called it evidence. One writer called it substance of something hoped for. Faith. Imagination mixed with faith. Now, as a leader, no telling what you can accomplish. As a father, no telling what you can build. When I built my first house for my family in Idaho all those years ago, I used to take friends of mine out to the vacant lot and show them through the house. Is that possible? Sure. Yes, of course. I used to say, here's the three-car garage. And they would look and say, yeah, this will hold three cars. The house that wasn't there, I described it so well they could see it. I could see it. Isn't that what the artist does that puts together the artist's rendering and says, this is the house that isn't there. Say, no, the house isn't there. Say, no, yes, this is the house. So I'd take, you know, my friends on a little journey through the house. This is the fireplace. It's got bricks on one side and it's got white stone on the other side. They would say, wow, what a fireplace. <laughs> and I'd take them through the bedrooms, all, the whole thing. Here's this kitchen with a view window. In the kitchen where you can see this incredible view. And they would look out the window. <laughs> I described that house so well, one day one of my friends bumped his elbow on the fireplace. <laughs> I'm telling you. <clears throat> Here's what you must do as a leader, especially as a parent. You must be able to see the future. You must be able to design it. Yes, see it as it is. But here's the next step of faith. See it better than it is. If you see it better than it is now, 
That's the vision. That takes faith. Then here's the third step. We've talked about it so often during these two days already. See it better than it is. Believe it can be better than it is. And number three is make it better. Go to work. And then a little bit of caution. Don't see it for more than it can become. Plenty is possible without being foolish. What did Brian say? So I want to be a millionaire by the end of the week. So would you give us a little longer? <laughs> Come on, that's not realistic. There's a thin line between faith and folly. And that's a good one not to cross. Plenty is possible without being foolish. Here's the next in finishing my portion today. I did a little talk one time on what made me wealthy. And here's what I covered. We did a little bit of it on lifestyle. One was my heritage has made me wealthy. My parents, my children, my, my parents, my books, books I didn't write that I read. What makes me rich is my country that has so much to offer. If I don't take advantage of it, it's my fault. I get to settle some accounts in courts I didn't construct, send my children to school I studied, schools I didn't build, all part of my heritage. I jump on an airplane I didn't construct, talk on a telephone I didn't invent. You could just go on and on with this list. The things we've been blessed with that were not the work of our hands, but were the work of many hands and geniuses that put it all together. That whole heritage list is so extraordinary. If you take the time to do it, you'll become so inspired by what you've got and what serves you so well that you didn't put together. Somebody else did. Somebody else paid the ultimate price. For our freedom in America, many paid the ultimate price. World War II especially. 50 million people lost their lives in World War II fighting for freedom, trying to stop the Hitler Nazi machine and then communism. Wow, and here we are. It's all handed to us, and the lights are on, and the place is ready, and the seats are here, and the tables are here, and the speaker has arrived. Wow, what gifts we have. Next, I said I'm wealthy because of my experiences. The places I've gone and the people I've met and what I've experienced has made me rich. We sometimes hear this expression, he has a wealth of experience. See, that's true, a wealth of experience. So here's the next key on this now. Treat your experiences as wealth, commodity, coin, currency. So what do we do with wealth? We invest it. We invest the wealth of our experiences into the possibilities of the future. Next, I'm wealthy because of my friends and my associates. Extraordinary people who say to me, what do you want to do? We'll just go do it. What do you want to accomplish? We'll just go do it. We'll accomplish it. How much more do you want to do? We'll get it done. It's so great to be surrounded by those kind of people. You say, what do you want to do? We'll go do it. If you can dream it, we can help. If you can dream it, we'll put it together. Unbelievable. How valuable is that? You can't buy it with money. Next, I'm wealthy because of the knowledge that's come my way. The teachers like this weekend who have taught me in those early days, I sat in these classes just like you and took notes and wondered about the possibilities. Could it be possible that this stuff is really that simple? But if I put it to work, it could be so profound. Next, I'm wealthy because of my future. A chance to serve, a chance to travel, a chance to teach, a chance to inspire. A chance to tell one more person that the possibilities are limitless no matter what's happened in the past. Next, relationships that are extraordinary. Marriage, friendship, those great, 
great experiences that have served us all so well. Here's the next. And we've written this somewhere, and some of you may already have it. It says, let others lead small lives, but not you. Let others, you know, cry and whimper over small hurts, but not you. Then another one that really helped me, helped me secure a fortune and fortunes after. Here it is. Learn to help people not just with their jobs, but with their lives. I learned early in my accelerated business career to teach life skills as well as business skills, work skills, and job skills. Because guess what? We need both work skills and life skills. Here's the last one. It's a promise from the Bible. Here's what it says. If you work on your gifts, they will make room for you. If you work on your gifts, they will make room for you. They'll make a place for you. You'll be invited to some extraordinary places if you keep working on your gifts. Make yourself valuable. Make yourself attractive. Make yourself unique. Become a person who has plenty to give and plenty to share, whether it's ideas or money or treasure or time. If you will work on that, you'll have places. Look where my gifts have brought me from the farm country of Idaho to this magnificent place to serve and share ideas, my experiences. Hopefully that will make a difference. And last, when I'm gone, 